So let's start at the beginning, and um, the beginning is always opening intelligence. The beginning is always the capacity to know. The beginning is the intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now. This bright alertness by which everything is known. And so, to identify this intelligence for ourselves is absolutely key. Because without this, we're missing a vital ingredient that allows us to really have a clear understanding as to everything that's going on in our lives. And so, just to stop thinking for a moment, to allow yourself to notice this intelligence, this bright alertness, what's hearing these words, is to bring in this vital piece of the puzzle into your life. And the simple instruction of taking short moments, of allowing all the thoughts, emotions and sensations just to be as they are, and allow yourself just a little bit of space to acknowledge this intelligence. So short moments repeated many times until this recognition is automatic and obvious at all times. That's the simple and the only instruction that you will find in Balance for You. And the reason why it's the only instruction, and the reason why it's so simple, is because you can apply it to all of your data. And data is just a term that we use to describe everything that's going on. So everything that you can experience, every thought, every emotion, every sensation in the body, every experience, rather than having this whole set of complicated labels and descriptive frameworks, we can just say data. So all data is known by exactly the same intelligence. Without this capacity to know, this open intelligence, that's wide open like a cloudless sky, then we wouldn't experience or know anything. And the power of this simple instruction of short moments repeated many times is that in our own experience we get to test out what it's like to identify and then to rely on this open intelligence. So this direct instinctive recognition and this direct instinctive experience of open intelligence is key. And what this does is it takes it from being a philosophy or an idea of interconnectedness or a philosophy or idea of oneness or unity and it brings it into an everyday lived reality. Now, although the instruction of short moments repeated many times is very simple, we actually have to apply it in our lives. We have to apply it amidst the flow of our data, however that looks. And so, what often happens is that we apply a short moment and we recognize that whatever we're experiencing is data shining forth from open intelligence. It's inseparable. We can't separate out data from open intelligence. So the only way that I know my data is through this wide open intelligence. And the only place that I have the opportunity to recognize open intelligence is with its data, is in my own experience. So I take this short moment and I recognize open intelligence shining forth all of this data. And that's a great insight, that's amazing. But what is then required is a support network that encourages us and supports us in continuing to make that same instinctive recognition. So I have the instinctive recognition and I, I recognize that what I'm thinking about somebody is a data stream shining forth from open intelligence. And then the next thought arises, but hold on, you know, is this my data or is this their data? And then we start to think about that thought and it starts to get quite confusing and there's all kinds of elaborate descriptions that can come up alongside that. And, and then we have other thoughts that perhaps, um, well, am I indulging this data? You know, is, is this the data stream that I haven't recognized as being open intelligence? And, and it starts to get very complicated. We start to think about this whole process of allowing data to be as it is. We start to try and work out what it looks like to rely on open intelligence and what it looks like to rely 
on this beneficial potency that we begin to discover for ourselves in our lives. And instead of trying to think about things and work things out, particularly around relying on open intelligence, simply relax right there and allow all of this data to be as it is too. Because this is the old habit of just reifying and describing and spinning off into these elaborate stories about this seamless flow of experience. We focus in on one description and suddenly we're off in this world of stories about it and what it means and the implications and the, the importance of it. And the power of the support network of the Four Mainstays is always to bring us back to this basic simplicity of what's looking. Because this intelligence encompasses everything. It's this clear seeing that doesn't require intellectual analysis to be the case. What happens when you rely on open intelligence, and what I see for myself is that my intellectual understanding and my rational thinking becomes much more potent and clear. I'm no longer referring to all of these old conceptual frameworks, these assumptions and these ideas that I've taken on board throughout my life. Instead there's this clear, wide seeing that is always accessible every time I choose to allow the data just to flow on by. Now, there can be all kinds of other data that come up as we gain confidence in, in relying on open intelligence for short moments and arrogance and pride um, something that actually everybody experiences. And particularly when we begin to have these insights into the nature of reality. So I'd been reading about this um, nature of reality, nature of intelligence for decades, reading these incredible books that spoke about it. And suddenly, this was my reality. <coughs> I was seeing everything clearly. The duality and the separation was simply resolving naturally. And so then there was this data stream of, this is incredible. You know, I'm incredible, you know, I've never seen this before. And look at all those people down there, you know, if only they knew what I know. And what's important here is to have the support of the community, because it keeps it real. It allows you to apply the practice of short moments to this data stream too. And to see that this is also simply the shining forth of open intelligence. That there's no need to make a big deal out of it. And equally, this applies to the counterpart of arrogance and pride, which is self-deprecation and self-doubt and self-judgment and self-criticism. When these thoughts and emotions and feelings arise, we have the same simple opportunity. We can spin off into these worlds of descriptions about them, you know, about why I'm such a failure or how I cocked things up again, or what I should have said, or what I shouldn't have said, or all of these continual commentaries that are going on. And we apply the short moments there as well. We see that all of these descriptions are simply evidence of open intelligence. They're not something that I have to make a huge, big story about. I can allow those to be too. I can allow them to be exactly as they are, just for a short moment. And the short moments are so powerful because they cut through all of these different conceptual frameworks we have about everything. They bring you right back to the reality of what's actually going on in this moment. Because all we have is this moment. This is the moment that we have the opportunity to recognize open intelligence shining forth its data. So simple. And yet this is the nature of reality. And with each short moment, you confirm that for yourself. Now, in terms of what other people might think or say or do, and particularly around gaining confidence in open intelligence, um, people will notice a change in you. And um, I've seen huge changes in myself in, in, in really practical ways, in terms of how I speak, how I relate, um, the things that I want to spend my time doing. But all of those changes <coughs> came about in a very um, gentle, natural way. So I didn't even have to make, in many cases, a decision about it. So with the example of speech, 
um, we were just just speaking last night, and I I, I remember back and and then walking past you know people on the street and listening to how most people still speak, and the the speech is something that's. Well, just one obvious example is just how much swearing there is and how much aggressive speech and how much speech there is putting other people down and judging and criticizing and then also putting yourself down and judging and criticizing yourself, even if it's disguised as humor. And what I've seen in myself is that that has just shifted. And it's only when I stop and notice that I see how dramatically that has shifted. And it wasn't a conscious effort, it was simply by gaining confidence in open intelligence that I began to see that my speech too is an opportunity for me to naturally express this beneficial potency. And it comes about so organically and gently because it's innate. It's not something that we have to contrive or force or pretend. Just by being ourselves and allowing our data to be exactly as they are, and recognizing open intelligence, these changes come about completely naturally, completely easefully, in their own perfect pace. And so other people notice these changes, and um, I could see that many of my friends were used to me behaving in a certain way, and their concern for me, the, the changes they saw in me, was basically them just expressing their love for me. You know, all of the concerns were simply that they, they were concerned because they wanted the best for me. And that's beautiful, that's amazing, that's wonderful. And, and I, I appreciate and love my friends so much. But I'm also very clear now about what I do and do not want to spend my time doing. You know, I don't want to go out and get pissed all night and be one of the people on Turbo Island this morning. <laughs> You know, I'm, I'm just not, I'm just clear, that is not what I want to do. And whatever anybody thinks about that, that is fine. That's, that's just the way it is. I'm very clear. And that, that strength and that clarity is, can be quite shocking for people, particularly when they're used to seeing you, oh, I was never one of the people there, but, <laughs> you know, sort of behaving in a certain way and using my speech in a certain way and when the, the sarcasm and the gossip around other people and what other people were doing or saying or thinking was there, just joining in so I could fit in with my peer group. And now I don't do that. But what I see is that that stand that I take, regardless of what people think about it, has a very powerful and beneficial effect on the people that I am with, whether they notice it or not. And this is actually what my friendship is about now. How can I support my friends to be the best possible human beings that they can be in a completely easygoing, natural way, not as some evangelical, balanced view person, but just by being an open-hearted <laughs> human being. Open-hearted human being. Completely simple, completely easy, completely natural. And the support of the Four Mainstays is crucial because there can be extreme data sets that we think, or we begin to then play out as having a power over us. And again, it's because we haven't applied the instinctive recognition to them. You know, we are training this up together. And to see that the data sets of numbness or indifference or not caring about things that we think we should care about are also data shining forth from open intelligence. And to instinctively and directly recognize that with the support of a community that will point that out to you in very practical ways. So being in service and contributing in that way is a great way to get real with you know, what's important and living up to commitments and all of the data that comes up around that. So the support is key. You know, I tried to do it on my own. I tried short moments and I had this tool of short moments and I thought that was it, that's enough, I can do it on my own. But very quickly I found myself slipping back into these habitual ways of relating and behaving that I knew I didn't want to be doing but I found myself still behaving like that and it was really painful because I could see what I was doing now and yet I was still doing it. So that's when the support is crucial, to really take this all the way. You know, the shift in reality from 
being an isolated subject living in a world of all these objects to a magical reality of complete beneficial potency where every moment is this beautiful opportunity for us to shine as human beings with nothing left out. That's the kind of shift that occurs in this gentle, effortless, natural, organic way. One short moment at a time and if you want to contribute something significant, contributing towards the evolution of our species in a very real, everyday way, I couldn't think of a more significant contribution. And that's something you can do right here and right now. Not a grand statement, but just, just getting real with who you are.